Hello, um, I'm making another uh, video regarding the uh, <clears throat> fact that some third films are uh, not as well liked as they should be and are, uh, you know, undeservedly uh, said that are just not good or in many ways are just uh, heavily criticized, uh, mostly nitpicking. Um, and again, uh, everybody is able to uh, have different points of view on certain films. Well, on all films, quite frankly, but as I did about uh, one not all that long ago about Return of the Jedi, I'm doing an, another one about The Dark Knight Rises. And um, I did a video, I live streamed it, uh, where I talked about essentially a rundown of why both films are actually good and they get heavily criticized, not, you know, uh, the way I feel very unfairly. And the thing is, when I was doing those videos, uh, or I, when I did that video in particular, uh, because it was live streamed, it kind of cut in and out, uh, at least for the screen uh, portion. You can still hear me, you can still listen to me. Uh, I guess you could say this is somewhat of a podcast, a video podcast, whatever. Uh, you could say that. Because uh, I don't really show clips, I just talk to the camera. There you go. Um, and I'm going to do something similar with what I did before with the Return of the Jedi with The Dark Knight Rises. Because while I did talk more in-depth with The Dark Knight Rises in the first video, uh, again, you know, there's... Um, anybody that was going to watch it could be find it off-putting because they start to talk and then my face freezes. I look stupid because... Perhaps I'm in the middle of saying something, and it stays like that for X amount of time. And then there'll be a brief moment where I'm talking like this, and you can see that, but then freezes again. Um, but, yeah. Just another reason why I haven't live-streamed in a while. Um, quite frankly, I liked live-streaming. It was fun, but, you know, I don't know. Uh, some people... I guess it could be my internet, or sometimes I've seen live streams on Google. Or other people have on Google Hangouts and kind of similar stuff. But I don't know, maybe it has to do with internet. That could be. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to. I have some stuff I've written about The Dark Knight Rises, I have some little pointers. Which is essentially to go down th through the rundown about what it is, some of the big complaints I've seen, and I'm going to justify, or I'm going to at least list the justifications on certain things, like why, s why said moment isn't exactly a plot hole. But, you know, if you've watched the trilogy and already pay attention to the movie, it's self-explanatory. I'm not going to get into every single aspect of it, because you know, I'm going to try and get this video done fairly quickly. Um, yet, uh, you know, take my time and not be like that one video where I just was reading something and I just, you know, couldn't talk, mispronounced words and all that. This is in my own writing, so I should be able to, uh, you know, be fairly good at it. One of the first things I actually want to point out is uh, The Dark Knight Rises was a hugely hyped film. I would say it was the most anticipated movie of 2012. Um, you could argue The Avengers was the most anticipated movie that year, but I believe it was The Dark Knight Rises because so much was left with The Dark Knight. You know, it's like it le left uh, ended on such a 
note that you just wondered what, what was going to happen next. And then when it was announced when Nolan said how The Dark Knight Rises would be the last film in the trilogy, then, you know, that even kind of makes the hype even bigger because it's the last movie. There's not going to be a fourth movie. And, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it was a big deal. It was huge. Um, again, you could say that Avengers was the most anticipated film of uh, 2012. The argument for that, um, but because of the hype and because of the success of A Dark Knight, I, uh, th those are just a few reasons why I think The Dark Knight Rises was more anticipated by so many. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there was a four-year gap, 2008 to 2012. In between, no one made Inception. Um, this isn't written, but I want to say right off the bat that, um, one thing people apparently wanted or thought of was the Joker should have been in this film in some capacity. Like, no one should have, at least, because recasting Heath Ledger would have been pretty, you know, just like a big no. But, um, <clears throat> uh, like, they, he should have used some sort of footage that was never used a deleted scene or something that we never got to see. The thing with Nolan is, uh, for him to have been involved, for the Joker to be involved in this film, uh, he would have had to plan that ahead of time. And quite honestly, Nolan, I've said this before for these movies, because um, I've done a few videos about this, or all these video films. But Christopher Nolan never planned a trilogy. In the initial stages of Batman Begins, he kind of flirted with the idea of make three movies, but he decided he's going to try and make the best movie he can right here and now. That was Batman Begins. And then if he found a story for the second movie, so that he would uh, make that. Hence with the teasing of the Joker at the end of Batman Begins in the Joker card. And then with The Dark Knight Rises, uh, again, he flirted with the idea of an ending or of a trilogy, as well as an ending. Um, because in the behind the scenes of the trilogy, there's a, like a documentary about the making of the trilogy. Uh, Emma Thomas's wife, or Emma Thomas, Christopher Nolan's wife, she said that essentially what I just said, which was he thought of it as a briefly for a moment, thought of it as such as it could be a trilogy, but focused on one movie at a time. But he always had a way, or he always had an ending of where he would like to see Bruce Wayne. He always had a vision of, or a potential thought at least, of where he would see if he was able to make more than one movie where Bruce Wayne would end up at the end of it. <clears throat> so that was really the only indication of a th of three films. It's Christopher Nolan at one point in time in the early stages thought of possibly three movies. And the biggest extent of that is he, th he had an idea of where he wanted Bruce Wayne to end up. And I've said this before, and I think it kind of bears repeating. This is a Bruce Wayne story. It's not a Batman story. Uh, which is another appeal it has to me, because it gave me something I never thought I really wanted in terms of uh, Batman. It's actually a Bruce Wayne story, not necessarily Batman. I feel Nolan has uh, he succeeded in uh, giving that. Um, so you know, uh, people wanted the Joker in this film in some capacity, um, but Nolan pretty much makes sure makes sure there is not one scene in his films that uh, isn't written into the movie that will eventually just get 
taken out. He wants to try and confine it, so this is the movie. This is how it is. This is how it should be. It's written to like it to be like this, and you're able to film all of this. It doesn't need to be a scene or two cut. That's essentially how he writes pretty much anymore. And as a result, there will be no Heath Ledger footage to ever show in this film. Also, the way the film played out, I don't see how you could even mention the Joker. It would, it would just be a moment out of nowhere. It's like, they just mentioned the Joker, and it's like, what? Okay. So, with that, all that with all that said, um, the earliest you could ever find Christopher Nolan having anything concrete enough to indicate the possibility of a third film after the dark after the Dark Knight, uh, I saw an interview back in 2008. Or that's from 2008 around the Blu-ray release of The Dark Knight which when asked about the movie and about another film he says he wasn't he basically said he wasn't exactly looking to do a third film right away but that he uh, by that December uh, to that to December 2008 he actually had a very rough story treatment written up for a potential third film. So the idea of a third film was essentially written, but nothing was really concrete because then he did Inception. That was a movie he wanted to make for some time. He got that made, and then after Inception he decided he would come back to Gotham City and conclude his trilogy because he, David Goyer, and his brother jo Jonathan Nolan, they made, they wrote a story, wrote a script about the final installment in their trilogy, and that is The Dark Knight Rises. So, <clears throat> one thing that always people seem to bring up is Bruce Wayne quit being Batman all because of Rachel, and uh, that's not exactly the case. She, as he always, he seemed to put it in the Dark Knight, she was his, or not necessarily even him, it was her. She said that he, uh, she's his, essentially that she is his way of not being Batman anymore. Like that, she was his way out. He could stop being Batman because Harvey Dent's doing all this good without wearing a mask. And the days of Batman were essentially ending. Uh, of course, there was a Joker, but uh, aside from him, you know, he could get rid of uh, other criminals without a mask. So, uh, you know, that wasn't exactly the only reason he quit being Batman, uh, you know, but also in a way, if even if that was the case, uh, Rachel died in the Dark Knight, spoiler alert, if you hadn't seen the films, I don't know why you'd keep watching if you didn't, it's pretty evident that I'm going to be spoiling the movie, I'm talking about big plot points and why some people nitpick. So yeah, she was killed and... Because of this, you know, he keeps being Batman. Uh, because the one person who we saw of having a future outside of the life of Batman, she was gone. She was taken from him in a way, uh, you could say. And so, he's like, well, I, I, I'm Batman. I can't be Bruce Wayne now. At least I. I don't see a potential life as Bruce Wayne right now. And so, you know, he keeps doing what he was doing before. Uh, all until he takes the rap for the murders Harvey did committed. 
You know, that's going to put a hold on him uh, becoming Batman and fighting crime quite well. The other thing is he was injured. Um, you know, he was shot. And also, what he fell, if you watch him at the end, he's running before he gets onto his the bat pod, the motorcycle. You can see him uh, limping a bit. And this is evident in The Dark Knight Rises, you know, he has a cane. Um, well, you know, within those eight years, uh, he, I don't believe he went to a doctor because, you know, Bruce Wayne is a stubborn character. You know, as Batman, he's like, if anything, he'll fight through the pain, you know, stitch himself up or have Alfred do it, help her set his bones and this and that. He doesn't really want to see a doctor about things because, well, he's Bruce Wayne and he's Batman and just wants to do, he wants to keep on fighting, uh, but because he takes the rap for Harvey Dent's murders and he's because of how, and the physicality that, uh, of being Batman getting beaten up and shot and stabbed and all that kind of stuff that would have, would happen to him as Batman, uh, well, you know, yeah, it's good going to take a toll on uh, his body. And also that brace he gets up, uh, from Lucius Fox is why he's able to walk fairly well and become Batman again. And able to do all of this. And that, uh, probably help, uh, I'm sure it helps him a lot. You know, he doesn't have to use the cane a whole lot really anymore. He's, he doesn't need to. After that, he's able to just walk normally, and um, so that's something. Also, the ar armor thing—you know—at the very end when he gets stabbed. Well, who, what is that? What does that happen? <laughs> I've heard people say, "Well, in the Dark Knight, uh, the movie that so many people they love and praise, certainly they missed the part where." When he wants to get his new suit, so he move his head and all that. Uh, when he gets his new suit, uh, he even uh, Lucius Fox tells him that he'll be more vulnerable to knives and bullets. Uh, you know, he's still has armor and all, but you know, uh, because it's. A, little, a bit more thinner material in order for him to be more flexible. Uh, getting stabbed in the side, it's not gonna exactly stop that. Also, that's the reason why in the Dark Knight he also got shot. And it, uh, it, it, yeah. People don't seem to realize these things. But whatever. Um, another is, you know, the Dark Knight Returns. This is regarding to the age gap and why some people have a problem with. He would never retire. He wouldn't take a break for eight years. Uh, the Dark Knight Returns is a very popular comic. Uh, if you enjoy Batman, I'm sure you have heard of it. If you haven't read it, I own it. I've read it. It's great. Essentially, that's where this film gets its inspiration from, and that is, it's an older Bruce Wayne, and he hasn't been Batman for some time. And the age gap between that comic and the last time people saw Batman was nine years, or in Dark Knight Rises, he has been unseen for eight People have no problem with the comic doing this, and yet when the film references this comic in that way, it's now a problem, which I don't know if I want to say hypocritical, uh, but I feel it's kind of dumb. And I could get into some of the linear nods 
of comics and storylines and stuff that the films have, but that could be a different video altogether. Like Nightfall is also another film, or another comic that this film is based on, as well as No Man's Land. Uh, you know, Christopher Nolan took these stories and put them in a more realistic environment. That, I mean, that way if Batman ever could actually happen in real life, These films are what it would look like, honestly, uh, or at least fairly similar. If if it wouldn't be close or exact, it would be fairly similar. I'm just gonna be saying that. So um, now, one thing also that people have a problem with is John Blake knowing Bruce Wayne is Batman. Well, the thing is. He knows who he is because he's similar to him in that he lost his parents at a young age just as Bruce Wayne did. Both have to had to put on masks in order to hide their pain. Go out in public. You know, Bruce Wayne puts on a mask and, uh, not just as Batman, but his fake persona and he has like when John Blake's talking about it, like this girl on each girl on each arm and all this and that that's a mask he puts on and he looked at him and he noticed it because he taught himself to have a very similar look that way he could look and act like everything's fine and everything's okay when it really isn't um, you know, it's just a connection they have because obviously um, wink wink this is his Robin this is Batman's Robin. And I'm pretty sure if you have all seen the film, you know why I say that. And, uh, yeah. So, he knew that because he taught himself to have a similar look of, you know, have a mask of being... Or looking okay when it when things are not okay, but you can't let people know things aren't okay at certain times. So you need to have a, a mask. And I'm gonna go on to the next topic because I, uh, I just kind of talked on about that. One thing people wonder is how did Bane know about the tumblers? that were under the sewers and, you know, uh, uh, from the Enterprises. Well, you know, Miranda Tate, as we all know, as of the end of the film, is Talia al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul's uh, daughter. She worked for Wayne Enterprises. So, you've got that. You know, she could have done some digging, found out about Batman vehicles and stuff down where Lucius had all those things, uh, or he kept all those things and had some of those things made and so on and so forth. Um, but even if Let's say she didn't tell him this. Um, uh, and Bane figured out all of his own. Uh, remember Coleman Reese? He was the guy that figured out Bruce was Batman because he found the Tumblr schematics and he came up to uh, Fox and was trying to blackmail uh, Bruce into giving him X amount of money. You know, if someone like him, who works there, who was able to find that out, why couldn't Bane? Because Bane's supposed to be really smart, right? Are we now going to assume 
if Mario and Tate didn't tell him all this, if he looked in, he's not smart enough to figure this out. Yeah, okay. So, another thing is right now with the pit and the punch that people that he got, like you know, how his back was fixed because of the punch. It wasn't really that. All the dude did was just punch his vertebrae back in, so so his back could be better aligned and that he could that it would then go into place later on. It was still hurt, but not as bad as it was, because when Bane hit his back with his knee, it made the vertebrae come out of line. And, uh, <clears throat> it had a very <laughs> sound. Maybe that, was a, maybe that sounded a lot worse than the actual sound, but still, you know what I mean. And also, he could get that fixed later on. Uh, you know, doesn't have to live the rest of his life with a with back pain. So uh, people wonder how did Bruce get back into Gotham? And like the time is all he's there all of a sudden, and then it's like a day or two later, they fighting and all of this. Well, the thing is, the scene, uh, well, well, he had 23 days, you could say, to get back from Gotham. At least that's what Lucius Fox said when talking about the bomb about to go off before we cut to Bruce Wayne in the pit. Um, just as he goes just before he goes uh, to climb and fails the last time before later on you could say the very next day or so he gets back and finally succeeds in climbing and jumping and climbing again out of a pit you, know, you could say he has been like 22 or 21 days uh, the thing is that's very doable and we also don't know exactly how much time has completely Past. We don't know exactly how long Bruce Wayne has been in Gotham at that point. Um, he was there, and um, you know, uh, it, had, it had five months, you know, until the bomb was going to go off and explode. Well, with him having almost a month to from getting out of the pit and um, going back to Gotham, he had enough time. And people wonder about that. Well, did any of them see Batman Begins? These huge Batman fans. Uh, I'm sure they saw the first two films. I know many people saw The Dark Knight. Many of the people that went and saw The, the Dark Knight Rises saw that that begins at some point. Yeah, they saw the Dark Knight Rises and they saw that the Dark Knight beforehand. I'm confusing myself, but essentially you'd think because oh there's a movie for the Dark Knight? Oh wow I'm gonna watch that. You would think so if they didn't see the Dark or Batman Begins, if not in theaters on D V D and Blu ray. You think that, right? I would think so, at least. Um, but in Batman Begins, you know, he travels the world. He didn't have a wallet. He burned it. He didn't have an ID because, you know, he burnt that, too. He didn't have money because he gave it to a homeless guy in exchange for a coat. He switched jackets, actually, yeah. Coach Jack gave him money, and then he uh, threw 
who rests in a fire pit. Or a barrel of fire in it. Um, so, all he had essentially was the clothes on his back, and he got onto a boat, which went somewhere and traveled around the world. Saw them, how the mind of criminals worked, and all of that. Did that with no money, nothing, or maybe as time went on, he did get some money, but not. Uh, but it's not uh, nothing to the amount of what Bruce Wayne would have. You know, he left for uh, like seven years. He traveled the world with not a lot of money, no ID or anything. But him traveling the world from one place to get back to Gotham, we now have a problem. We don't know because we've never, I guess, seen Batman Begins. We have a big problem with this now. I don't. That's just so. Uh, that's odd to me. That's always been an odd complaint to me. <clears throat> And also, how does he get past guards, the people guarding the surrounding areas that people could potentially escape from? Like, I guess, <clears throat> on the ice or whatever. He's essentially a ninja. His training around the world, training with the League of Shadows, he essentially learned how to become a ninja in many ways. Why is... Why are we now having problems with this kind of concept, which for so many years, in comics, and video games, and all of this and that, we have no problem with Batman when he does things like this, but now when it's in a movie, we don't show his journey back to Gotham? It's a problem. And you know, if, if no one did have a scene where you saw Bruce Wayne, like, as he snuck onto an airplane or a boat or whatever to get back to America and to Gotham City, you'd have people complain about, why, why'd you need to show that? You could have eliminated that and it, it would all be fine and blah, blah, blah. It's a situation where, in a way, no one couldn't win. People would complain. And also with all that, some people think Bane should have been, should have killed Batman long before, or uh, when he eventually did try to do so. Um, well, the whole point was he injured Batman so that he could see the citizens of Gotham destroy themselves and the city from the inside and see his failure sees that he could not save Gotham, that what he was trying to achieve was actually pointless and there never was an actual point. He should have let it, them destroy themselves, destroy the city, so it could be rebuilt as it's supposed to be. So like the League of Shadows was doing in Batman Begins, it's a similar thing. Coming back, it's coming full circle. But people, I guess, don't have a... They don't like that. Um, another thing is with, with the police underground. Um, you know, how were they able to survive? Well, Bane said that they're going to live underground. going to get supplies given to them so that they know what it's like to like suffer. They're going to live, but they're going to live underground. They're not going to be able to really get out. And um, not every cop was down there. Gordon had every available cop that was working at that time to go down to the sewers to look for Bane and his people. You know, Gordon, Blake, Foley were above ground, as were I'm sure, uh, as were other cops, because there was even a meeting uh, before uh, Gordon uh, goes to find Foley his home, and also there were special op, op uh, 
special ops that were killed. So there were cops, but they were either, they had their day off, or maybe they were sick or something, but, you know, they just stayed home and everything went to hell, and they just stayed there uh, until, you know, Gordon and Blake assembled uh, them together, a small group of cops. Um, um, <clears throat> and now I want to talk about why uh, uh, Selena killing Bane was fine. Um, it was essentially to fulfill her arc, because let's be honest, by that point, Bane's arc was done. He and Batman fought twice. First time he won, second Batman won. But then he had the he ties up Batman because he was double crossed by Talia Al Ghul or Miranda, who uh, Bruce thought she was, and she reveals it all to him. Well, her plan, you know who she is. She stabs him. And uh, it, some people think, you know, Bane's just a lovesick puppy because he's just doing this for love and blah, blah, blah. Well, no, because if he was just blindly listening to Talia, he would not have said to Batman, We both know I have to kill you now. <clears throat> I could do a better impression, but my <clears throat> throat's a bit hoarse. So please bear with me. Um, but yeah, he says he's, they know he has to kill him. So he shoves Batman to the ground, puts a gun to his face, and just before he kills Batman, Selena Kyle comes and shoots him and kills him. And the reason she does that, aside from you know completing her arc and being a better person, like Bruce said she was, she was better than just shooting a hole. For people who escape for, from and leave the city and then going and never coming back, uh, she comes back and saves him. Because also, she feels guilty for uh, essentially screwing Batman at the very beginning. You know, leading him to Bane. He's in, he's locked in with Bane and she watches them fight. She also learns Batman is Bruce Wayne, whom she has now, she's kind of changed her mind on how she thought of, you know, Bruce. He said he liked her place, and then he even called her out on her BS when she said, I'm sorry they took all your money. He goes, no you're not. It's like he's able to see through her, so that probably impresses her. That he's able to see through that you know, she, like, she isn't all <clears throat> she tries to be. He sees her. He sees through her. He's she. He sees the real her. But then with Batman, uh, she finds out those two people are the same, she's devastated, because now she uh, thinks, like, well, uh, I just essentially ga uh, just killed him. Killed this guy who... I really... Un I, I, I misjudged. And now I just killed him. And then he comes back, and then she... She saves him. Uh, essentially... To try and not be guilty over that. And then she helps him save the day again. <clears throat> um, and with the bomb, um, uh, you know, with... So, yeah. Now, we're going to talk about the very end with the bomb going off regarding Bruce Wayne living. You know, I personally believe he got out of the bat and hit the autopilot after he shot the buildings. Uh, um, you know, when he shoots the buildings and there's smoke. 
and then you see the bat come, and everybody looks and sees it, and it goes over the bridge and over to the sea or water or whatever, and then blows up. Uh, I believe he got out before them, because my reasoning is when you look at Batman's face when the, when the bomb's about to go off, you see shadows across his face. These are buildings. You know, so there you go. Uh, why couldn't the bat have an escape pod when the tumbler had one? Hence why the motorcycle is called the bat pod. Is it because it's the escape pod? Who's to say there wasn't a similar uh, way of, uh, another escape pod to another vehicle Batman has. You know, that's just... That would make sense. Honestly. Um, and also with the bomb, uh, it had a six mile radius of exploding dips. It had a six mile radius when it blow up, blew up. It would just blow up and really ruin six miles of the city. And yeah, there would be radiation, I'm sure, because it was it was nuclear. <clears throat> but uh, I say this because some people think, well, all the citizens of Gotham would die because of radiation poisoning. No, I don't know. If you look at the movie, you look at the end, the bomb was further than six miles out. It was a lot further. You could say it was 50 miles out. You know. It was close enough to see a mushroom cloud. I don't know. Perhaps it was 100 miles. I don't know exactly, but yeah. It was a lot more than 6 miles. I'm just going to say that. Because um, it doesn't look like it's super close to the city. Okay, and the reason Bruce has Batman to die is so he can move on and let that part of his life be over. You know, he never wanted to be Batman forever. It's even said in uh, The Dark Knight, you know, with Rachel. But also, uh, it, Batman Begins, he was saying how he wanted Batman to be a symbol. Something that, you know, to, you know, he would put fear to those who preyed on the fearful. And also in the car ride with Blake that gives to Bruce, he even tells him that it never mattered who Batman was. He was a symbol. Anyone could have been Batman. And, um, that's kind of hinting at the very end of the film. Um, and also, yes, Bruce Wayne is alive because people think because of Inception. Oh, it was all a dream and all this and that. Like, it was all a dream and Alfred just imagined things. Okay, well, the engineers said that the person who fixed the autopilot was Bruce Wayne. He, like, fixed it, like, what, maybe, like, the week at least in the week of what led to the events of the end of the film. Quite possibly he fixed it before then, but let's just, you could just say that. Uh, uh, so, there you go. So, was Lucius Fox having that dream where, oh, he's alive? Because he fixed the autopilot. Was Gordon imagining that the bat signal was fixed? Because who else could have done this? Well, then those 22, 21 days of him, he could have gotten back if he got onto a plane that was heading to, you know, America. But he snuck aboard, and then from there, that could have been, like a, depending on the flight, it could have been, taken a day, maybe two, and he could have taken a 
a few more days, so perhaps anywhere from two to five days. Still has plenty of time of being in Gotham, fixing uh, the autopilot, fixing uh, the you know that signal, and also having those coordinates and all that stuff set up for his his will, his estate, and all that for the boy's home. Uh, all of them to be living in Wayne Manor. And dedicate and renaming it to Thomas and Martha Lane, you know, home for the like uh, orphan boys, essentially. Um, so all these things happen at once, coincidentally. But only Alfred's having a dream of seeing Bruce there. Also, why would uh, he see Selena Kyle there? Alfred only met met her once, and he saw her picture and name like once after that time of talking and encountering her why would he think of her as the one to be with uh, Bruce Wayne at the very end and also they mentioned how there's pearls that were are now lost and yet she's wearing uh, his mother's pearls yeah, you know, you could say she stole them, or perhaps he gave them to her, since they seem to be a couple at the very end, you know. You know pretty sure they're a couple, because uh, otherwise it's like, yeah, let's just take a vacation in uh, Italy. Why not? Yeah, I believe they're dating, and yeah, if I would, you know, Alfred see her being with him when he really didn't know her and met her once and saw her picture and name once again after that. Uh, and some people say, why doesn't, don't people, you know, uh, recognize Bruce Wayne? Well, it's the the name is more famous than the face. And really the only people probably around the world that would ever know who, what Bruce Wayne looks like are the people he probably did business with. And that was it. Where in America, and particularly Gotham, people would, you know, know who Bruce Wayne is. And, you know, you could have said all the people realizing, like, Bruce Wayne is dead, like, Gordon and Alfred and, um, Fox. They could be finding out all this as, uh, within hours of each other, of realizing this, finding out he's alive. Um, uh, also... In Batman Begins, nobody knew who Bruce Wayne was in prison. Despite him being a big name, nobody knows who he is. And then some have a problem with, like, Robin John Blake. John Robin Blake. Yeah, yeah, Robin is his first name. And, uh, they're like, well, he's good, you know, he's going to get killed because he can't fight like Batman. Well, who's to say Bruce Wayne won't come back under an, an assumed identity? And perhaps he'll have some facial hair or it'll look different. Uh, or maybe he'll be Bruce Wayne and he could just be living in the penthouse and visit uh, his old home, you know, which is now the boy's home, seeing how things are, you know, because if Batman Begins, he was said to be dead for X amount of years. Uh, same thing couldn't happen again, after all, all the chaos that happened with Bane, couldn't at all see 
potentially even saying Bruce Wayne's dead too. Um, uh, so he could be there, and Bruce could be training with, you know, he could be training Robin to be the next Batman, uh, or pre or some say he be, could be Nightwing. Who knows? Um, what could happen? Uh, yeah, he and Selena could be in that penthouse that we saw in The Dark Knight. So, and I'll conclude this with the film was essentially the trilogy becoming full circle, and many movies uh, do this. Some trilogies, some. Movies that are more than three movies do this. Yet yeah, they don't seem to draw the criticism that this movie gets. Um, also, I believe Bruce Wayne is entitled to have at least one happy ending in a Batman film series. Especially since this is the story of Bruce Wayne and Batman. Why can't we have Bruce Wayne for once? have as much of a happy, happily ever after ending as you would ever get. I see nothing wrong with this, but, you know, that's me, and I love the movie. Uh, but, you know, yeah, this was almost an hour long. Uh, but, you know, I just wanted to make this video in kind of deconstruct some of these criticisms. Uh, you know, no movie is perfect. There exists no perfect movie. Uh, some movies have flaws. One could say the flaw of this film is so much happens in such amount of time and maybe some things could have been explained a bit more. Uh, I think it was fine, but I can see the argument there. You can also make the same argument for the Dark Knight and Batman Begins as well. But because it's a thir the third film in the trilogy, uh, we gotta complain about it. Because the third with threes, seems like you gotta complain. Unfortunately. But yeah. That's all I have to say. So, until next time.